But it wasn't always successful. You know, an artist always starts with a blank canvas. And when Muji was doing their uh, renovation, they said, we've got to embark on a whole new area. Instead of selling all their old goods for a low price, they burned their inventory. They burned everything. They started with a fresh canvas, just like an artist does. Start from fresh, just like my professor told me to do. That's what Muji did. And it made a very, very big difference. And maybe you know this university, Stanford. Stanford wasn't always great either. Do you get the idea? In order to be great, you've got to have courage. You've got to do something different. You know, the artists that I work with, I say, show me something I've never seen before. I don't want somebody who does tulips. I want to see something absolutely different. And there are people in this room who have shown a lot of courage because they've left careers in banking and gone into art or gone into something completely different. And that takes courage. But at Stanford University, 100 years ago, it was not such a great university. They said, OK, we're going to be the Harvard of the West. They set a very, very high goal for themselves that took courage to set, and they reached it. And students who have taken my classes, they know about this company called Semco. And some students love it. Some students can't believe it. But Semco is the kind of company, you know, Yuto knows. You want to say Yuto? Go ahead. Has no rules. People can set their own salaries. People can decide on their own products. People decide where they want to sit. People decide who they're going to work with. People decide how much salary they're going to make. And originally, the students come into my class, they say, impossible. And we watch a video where they research it even more, and they find that Semco is a very, very successful company. Now, I'm not saying you have to be like Semco. You have to be like Stanford. You have to like learn, be like Muji. But we can learn a lot about artists from courage and from setting very, very high goals for ourselves. Now, when I came back from my trip, and when I started the art gallery, I really changed as a teacher. Everything changed for me. I really became a better teacher. And I don't say that in a conceited way. I became much more honest, much more clear, much more direct, much more artistic, much better. And instead of sitting in the front, I usually sat in the back. And if you ask some of the students who took my classes, they never saw me in a suit. <laughs> they said, did you have a suit? I said, well, I had to go look for it. But the classes were like this. You know, the students did the presentations. You know, God, I'm getting to be an old guy. I can't be out there giving the presentations all the time. The students were the ones who did the presentations. And the students became a community. And it was a community that not only was in the classes, it was a community of OB and OG as well. And if you see yourself in there, you know, we always had a good time. We always had to figure out, you know, a way to connect with each other, a way to do things. So I knew that would happen maybe as a result of, of my art gallery. But here's what happened that really surprised me because when I opened the art gallery, I learned about business a lot. You know, I learned about making a profit. But I learned kind of a Japanese way of doing business. And it's really weird for a gaijin like me to be learning about a Japanese way of doing business. And I saw that business is really more than money. And teaching is, you know, the salary is not bad here, but I won't get it next year anyway. Okay. Teaching is certainly not about making money. You know, when I first came here, it was the bubble, and the students came up to me and said, oh, you're here for the money, aren't you, Bob? I go, no, I'm not here for the money. But business, business has tremendous potential that goes way beyond money. And what I learned from running this gallery is that business is so much about community. You know, I love coming to work here because I love seeing my students. And I love it when students say, Friday's my favorite day, or Thursday's my favorite day because we're going to have this class together. But business is also about community. If you work with people that you don't love, that you don't like, what kind of fun is that? You want to go with people and say, hi, 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 I got to go to work. Sorry, I can't say hello to everybody. But you want to create a community. I mean, I started in the consulting business. What I loved about the consulting business is a lot of the people were the same age as me. We created a community. We created, we had fun together. We hung out together. We did things. When I see your pictures, I, you know, I see you all hanging out with your friends and hanging out with each other. It makes me very, very happy. You know, when I see some of my colleagues here from the English section in Shogakabu, and Mr. Yukawa is here, who was one of the first people that I met when I came to Shogakabu, and he introduced me to Nomikai. 
And he said, we're going to take care of you, Tobin. Didn't you? He's so shy. You know, he's one of those shy Japanese guys. But, you know, when he had that smile and he welcomed me into Shogakubu, I was so, so happy. And I see other people, too. And I'm not going to embarrass them. Otherwise, Mr. Yukawa, it'll be the last time I see him. But business is really about making a contribution, a contribution to other people's lives. That's what we do in teaching. But in business, we do the same thing. I'm making a contribution to my artists. I'm helping them in their salary. But I'm also making a contribution to other people. You buy art, your life gets better. Not my life gets better. Your life gets better. Because you have something that inspires you. You have something that's beautiful in your home. You have something that you never had, of, had before and that you never thought of before. And I had read that Japanese business was about relationships, but now I really get it. I really get how beautiful these Japanese relationships are. I get it because people that I've known 15 or 20 years ago have come here today to see me, and I'm, I'm really touched by that. And people that I started working at Keio University, I'm really touched by that too. And people I know from the art business, they're here and they're touched by it. And I'll tell you, sometimes it's really tough in the gallery, but the artists don't say to me, Bob, where's my money? They say, we understand, it's tough this month, we can wait. And people don't say to me, how much are you going to pay me? They say, Bob, we trust you. We know you're going to treat us fairly. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's worth a lot. You know, people talk about loneliness. People talk about, you know, people who just stay in their house and don't ever come out. People talk about how hard it is to meet someone to love, that they stay single. I'm creating community. I'm doing that in my classes. And I'm doing that in my gallery. And I shouldn't say just me. Hitoshi's there, too. It's a beautiful thing. We connect with a lot of people. I probably meet 100 people a week. And I have a chance to talk with them. And it's about learning. And you know, we're always learning. The artists are always learning. The artists are always changing. And business is about trust. And business is about integrity. And every year I meet students who are making a million dollars and they say, Bob, I'm unhappy. What should I do? I have the dream. I say, you've got to follow your passion. You've got to do something else. Because you can't take money to your grave with you. You can't kiss your money. Money doesn't give you a hug. But the people around you can give you a hug. The people around you are people who can give you a smile. You know, people worry about me. They say, Bob, you're going to get really old without these young kids around you. I hope not. But, you know, I come into class and everybody's smiling. You know, this has got to be the only university in the world where people at the end of class come up to me and say, thank you for teaching us. Other professors come up to me and say, thank you for teaching our students. What a wonderful, wonderful place this is. And it's about trust and honesty and integrity. And some of you were even kind enough to say, I can't believe you're 64 and really retiring. So now I'm leaving. Time to say goodbye. Goodbye to Kale. Goodbye to this part of my life. I'm not sad. I'm happy. Not because I don't like Kale, but it's time for me to do something different. I've been here 19 years. I've loved it. I've loved it. I've met wonderful, wonderful people. But it's really time for me to start and do something different. So people ask me what? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I'm going to do something different. It's not going to be the gallery. Probably do consulting, a different kind of consulting. Not going to be teaching at Waseda. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to do something different because life is short. And I really want to do something different in my life. I really am very, very proud to have been a member of this university community. I cannot tell you enough. This has been my life, and you've been a big part of it. Keio University welcomed me as the first Gaijin. And you know, now we have others, you know, other good ones. But I really became a member of this community. It's been a wonderful, wonderful life here. But it is time for me to do something else. And I really want to thank everybody for welcoming me. It's been a privilege to be a member of the Keio community. It's been a privilege. And I've been able to do things here that I never, ever imagined. I am a better person because of Keio University. I mean that. And I think every single one of you played a role in that. Now, I made it all the way through without any business models. 
And I usually don't do many business models, but you know, some of you don't know me as a, some of you know me as a gallery, some of you know me as a professor, some of you know me as a consultant, but I'm all of those things. So let's let's start with a chart anyway. This is a chart that I give my students sometimes. On one hand, you have caution. On the other hand, you have courage. And I say to my students, where are you on this? Are you on the cautious side or are you on the courageous side? And some of the students say, courageous, courageous. And other students say, oh, I don't want to say, because they're on caution. Well, I say, what would it take for you to move over to the right? What would it take for you to go one step over to the right? You don't go from caution to courage in one step, one leap. But you can go in one step. So I ask you today, if there's something that you're thinking about doing and you're really feeling panicky, I want to urge you to go the next step, to move a little bit more towards courage, to put your fear aside, and where are you? And go over more towards courage and have the courage to create something. I'm going to end with a poem, and people say this poem is my life. I hope it's not only my life. You know, maybe some of you know this poem by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a wood and I. I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. So thank you very much. And what I'd like to urge you to do is this. Be great and have some fun. Thanks very much. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Now, in a concert, I'd have to sing another song, right? <laughs> but I'm sorry, I have nothing worse. You know, I'm really touched. You know, that, that was kind of my hope. Uh, my hope that is that I'd be able to say something that could touch your heart today, but I never, ever expected a standing ovation. I never expected to have so many people come. I never expected to be able to have this wonderful job and be able to make a contribution to so many lives. And I really, I really appreciate your feedback. And I... I'm not leaving Japan. I hope I'll see you again. I hope we have a chance to talk at the party. But I'm the one who should applaud you because you did so much for me. Thank you very much.